morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Dr. Don. Uh, you can't see that. There's going to be no conversation in this particular show. There's going to be a unique combination of music, uh, instruments, and dance, of course. So I'm going to say a few words about the title of the show. The title of the show, as you can see, is A Creative Merging of Music and Dance. A Creative Merging of Music and Dance. And Dave Lee is going to tell you what that means in a few moments. And yeah, I'm going to introduce the guests, and he, Dave will talk about them too. We have uh, Emily Paris, uh, Dave's daughter, who will dance, of course. And then Vinnie Bargas on acoustics. And what else? Percussion. 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 All right, so let's go on now. Dave, you're the guy, you're the guy who started this whole idea going. And I've been looking forward to it for a long time because I've known you forever and ever. <laughs> and we have all sorts of arrangements in the past in our relationships. Right. And you've taught me a lot. And we can go on for a long time with that part, but we won't do it. But now we're still together after all these years. Yes. And I'm still a part of what you're doing and enjoying Absolutely. so much what you're doing. Yes. And I wanna, I'm curious about what's going to happen as a result of this show because it's a new idea that I've never heard from you in the last 20 years or so. Well... This is a, a project that began approximately four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and my daughter became a belly dancer, and I started to hear some music that I really hadn't heard before, and I really liked it. And it was not necessarily music that landed in one style, but kind of landed in a lot of places. That sounds and, pretty far out. Say some more about yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I'm from the 60s, so there you go. Uh, but really, uh, we call the band Melting Mergers, so it's a melting pot of music, mer st musical styles merged together. So that's, that's kind of where we started, and I had, as a composer, I put a whole bunch of things on the table, and kind of between the three of us uh, decided what was going to see the light of day and what was going to get developed. And, uh, you know, this is going to be seen around the world. That's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the intent. <laughs> Unless they have you feel good about it. No, it's, it's, we like that because uh, uh -huh. the, the fact that there's so many different influences, uh, you know, the three of us are extremely diverse in what we like and what we listen to. Will you say a few words about each one of uh, the other guests? Absolutely. Uh, on my right, your left, uh, <clears throat> is uh, Vinny Bargas, drums and percussion. Um, I met Vinny through uh, my friend Floyd Cruz, uh, mm -hmm. and Floyd was recording an album, and Vinny was in Floyd's band. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I was looking for a drummer and percussionist who was excited about the project and had the skills to pull it up. How long have you been doing what you're doing with music? I've got about 25 years. Oh, it's a few years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I've only been two weeks, so it's oh, yeah, yeah, much more here. experience than get I Get him out of here. <laughs> and how about the daughter? Yeah. Let's have her tell us how long she's been doing this. Well, <clears throat> she can probably answer that better, but uh, she's been dancing a few years and uh, learned from a family friend. Uh -huh. and uh, who is really talented, and so she got really good instruction. And uh, really, she's the one to talk about that. But, of course. <clears throat> but it's the fact that she uh, had her own creative voice. Uh, we attempted piano lessons for a little while, and I don't think that was her thing. And, and that was, that was totally cool, because I figured at some point she was going to find her own creative voice, and she did. And it was something that really had no influence from me. She chose it totally on her own, and I'm, I'm quite pleased about that, because uh, it would have been nice to maybe have a, another piano player in the family, but that wasn't a deal breaker at all. <laughs> so, but anyway, as far as to what she dances and her instruction, that's, that's for, I think I'll defer to, to my daughter for that. And what are the songs that you'll be doing this evening as you talk about them before you do them and give, give us a brief summary and our overview. Boy, uh, we're going to do four tunes mm -hmm. uh, as a group and then I'm going to attempt a solo tune. Uh, but the songs uh, 
I wrote all of these. Uh, we arranged them, Vinny and, and Emily and I, and we all co-produced it. Uh, but I take the blame for the composition. Uh, the uh, first tune is called The Dawn Patrol, D-A-W-N, as opposed to D-O-N. Uh -huh. So we thought that would be a good appropriate tune to start with, plus we like the sound of it. Uh, but The Dawn Patrol is, is uh, the title of this song comes from a uh, Steely Dan lyric. Uh, and there's a tune where they say the Dawn Patrol doesn't ask twice, they do it with a shotgun. Uh-huh. So it's essentially a song about the Mafia, <laughs> with no words. So that's what that is. Second tune will be uh, called A Fork in the Road, uh, and it's a song, that was the first tune I wrote for this. Uh, it's a song that starts in D minor and never leaves. So at the end of the tune, we're still at the fork in the road. Mm -hmm. We haven't made up our minds. Uh, third tune is called <clears throat> Saz U, and that's spelled S-A-Z. Saz is an Egyptian guitar. Uh -huh. So that's, uh, that's what that is. The last tune is called Rush Our Fools, and it features the voice of uh, our friend, the late Floyd Cruz. Mm -hmm. So we uh, had some fun with that. And uh, Floyd has never heard what we did to his voice, but I think we had some fun <laughs> with it, and I think he would approve. I'm uh, sure so I'm those right. are the four tunes. After that, time permitting, I'm going to try uh, and do a little improv with my uh, gadgetry here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. I never know because it's it's totally unrehearsed. I know you never know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we do some tunes? Yes, please, please. I'd like to bring my daughter up, Emily Paris. And we're going to do uh, the first tune again is called <clears throat> The Dawn Patrol. And uh, this uh, is a tune, I think uh, you and I play everything on this track. We do? Yeah. So this is, uh, <clears throat> we do a lot of work in the studio, so you're going to hear a bunch of sounds. And Vinny and I produced all of those. Uh, our recording studio is literally just six blocks down the road from here. So shall we start? All right. Here's a song. This is called The Oh.
Once again, oh, that was called man. Fork. Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, that was oh, called oh, a, a Fork oh. in the Road. And uh, just talk about, there's a couple of other musicians on that track we should acknowledge. Uh-huh. Uh, Brendan Keenan is on electric bass, uh, acoustic electric bass, actually. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, on saxophone, tenor saxophone, uh, one of our favorite people that we get to work with, uh, his name is Renato Caranto. And uh, he plays with virtually everybody in town, Mel Brown included. Uh, but he's also the saxophone player on tour for country legend Merle Haggard. So wow, big he's, name. He's, uh, he's quite the player. In fact, that particular track, uh, his saxophone part uh, is done in one take. He heard the song once, went in the booth, and played that. So once? He, once. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's brilliant, and uh, we're honored to have him with us. There's so many great musicians in Portland. We have a great music community here, and Renato is at the top of the list. Okay. So again, that was called A Fork in the Road. Uh, before that is The Dawn Patrol. Again, name of our group is called Melting Mergers. 
and uh, so there you go. Why don't you, uh, my daughter's the dancer here, and uh, feel free to, uh, to ask her some questions if you'd like. Well, you don't have a mic, so you can't answer. I'll ask the questions anyhow. How is it you're so god gorgeous and your dad is so ugly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're a beautiful woman, girl, Thank you. lady. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling right now? Feeling uh, sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in your heart. Oh, I feel great. I feel good. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do, so I feel really good about it. Do you like this guy, Dave? He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask you any more questions. That's enough. <laughs> uh, anything you want to volunteer uh, for the viewers to know about you? Any um, thoughts that you want to tell them about? Well, I do a dance called Tribal Belly Dance, and that's, um, that's originated from California. And it's a blend of uh, American cabaret style and American tribal style. And then it also has jazz influences and hip-hop influences, so it's a fusion of dances. You need some serious merging there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do that tonight? Tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Merge every night. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new thing, merging. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a delight to watch you. And I, for a while, my mouth was hanging open, and I had to deliberately put the pencil between my teeth because you were so <laughs> beautiful to look at. <laughs> Anyhow, shall we continue? Yeah, let's, uh, yeah. again, we'll, we'll just talk about the, uh, the tunes for a little bit here, as I notice I've, my screen is not where it's supposed to be. Uh, but let's uh, just briefly talk about uh, the tunes. The next tune that we're going to do uh, is called Saz You. Um, and... Emily was uh, alluding to other influences. Uh, the Saz is an Egyptian uh, four-string guitar. Uh, it kind of looks like a very long banjo. Uh, and I've seen it played in a variety of styles, both in its ethnic uh, use, but also I've heard it played plugged into amplifiers and played with a slide. So it's almost like a, a, uh, an American uh, guitar sound, but it's coming from this instrument that has a different flavor than American guitars, if you will. How do you so, find this stuff? Uh, you know, there's a piece of software that we bought. First of all, I mean, the Saz is uh, an instrument that's used a lot in, in Middle Eastern music. Sure. Uh, but I, uh, uh, you know, happened to have seen it played uh, in a band and uh, really wanted to use that sound. Uh, and I came across some software uh, and a lot of the, in, the world type instruments that we use. Uh, the female voice is one of them uh, that you heard earlier. Those are all coming from software. And so I've literally now got samples of uh, instruments from all around the world that I don't even know. I've never heard of these instruments, but occasionally we come across a sound that we like and we uh, do our best to exploit it. <laughs> You're going to exploit one more to this evening? Yeah, we're going to do a couple of more band tunes and then I'm going to try to do something solo. I have uh, an iPad here, an iPhone, and some keyboards and things, so I'm going to attempt a little... Uh, jam thing uh, before we close it out but well shall we do our uh, tune called Saz You now? Yeah, yeah about a half an hour or so into the show we'll take a break a pause and catch our breath and then we'll come back and resume the playing and the dancing. Yeah maybe we'll just do one tune now and then maybe we'll do the break. So let's excellent, do, excellent. Let's do Saz You and uh, let's see if I can get this to work right.
you did it again. I can't talk. <laughs> Beautiful. Sir, could you take that pencil out of your mouth, please? I can't. I better keep it there. And watching your face as you're playing. Oh, <laughs> gee. My face. I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> yeah. I make, I make uh, guitar players make the ultimate bad faces, but uh, keyboard players are right up there, you know. Right up there. With, with drummers, I guess, too. So we're about halfway into the hour, you think? I, th I don't know. I mean, we don't have our running clock today, running so I don't clock. know where we are. So how about, can, well, how about we take a little break now, and then we'll get a calibration on how much I, time we've got left. Yeah, can I just say one thing about who was on that last track? Please do. Uh, we had a gentleman, his name is Skip Von Kusky, and he's a cellist. And on this track, he also plays mandolin. And uh, he's a, a brilliant musician uh, that has a number of different acts that he plays with. Uh, Groovy Wallpaper, Vagabond Opera, Portland Cello Project. And I know he's just ca come out with a movie called The Malheur Movie which has to do with the wildlife refuge. Mm -hmm. And I think they just have a show on that, as a matter of fact. So that's who was playing on that last track uh, on cello and mandolin, Skip Von Kusky, and we really appreciate him uh, being involved. Brilliant musician. How you so. gather all of this talent is beyond <laughs> me. You've still got secrets I haven't heard from you yet. Well, there's a few back in there, you know. And how about this guy over here with the drumsticks? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, uh, I think I bring to uh, uh, the group um, some Latin. I bring some, some R&B, a little R&B. Uh, growing up in East Los Angeles, grew up with a lot of bands uh, uh, like War and Tower of Power. And so kind of that Latin soul is what I try to merge along with whatever he brings to the table. So we just kind of, you know, melting mergers. We just merge that together. And, it's, uh, uh, it's danceable. It feels good. She dances to it great, so it's, uh, it's well, a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Vinny's talents, I mean, I, I really, he was not just a drummer, but he was a, a brilliant percussionist. And the two of them together is kind of what I was really looking for. And, and uh, his, his background, uh, like he said, is, again, what I was looking for. And then... He kind of heard the concept and, and got on board. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been a totally easy process. Sure. Uh, there have been times when, uh, you know, there was discouragement and going, well, I don't know if I can do this, or I don't know if we can do this, or maybe this isn't the right thing to do, or those kind of things. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, we persevered. Yeah. At the end of the day, after four years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we kind of chipped away at it. It was kind of like a sculpture, really. It was like, you know. It and, went by like that, though, wasn't it? <laughs> but, and, and then, you know, there was a point where, you know, we'd been living with the tunes for a while, and, and uh, I talked to Vinny one day, and he says, uh, I'm going to do the drums over on a bunch of tunes. And that was a turning point. Because. Well, a lot, of the, a lot of the initial grooves that I've had on these were really busy, uh, technically really busy, um, a lot of fills, a lot of different patterns. <clears throat> and after a couple of years, after a year of listening to it, I'm just like, it's just way too busy. Yep. I just want to just get it down to the basic drum and groove pattern and then, and then add in these nice little sweet spots of percussion uh, just to kind of carry the groove. But... Uh, I'm glad I did. Uh, it, it was exactly a blessing in disguise to kind of step away and then come back. Sure. Uh, because when we did come back, uh, I think it was a better product. Than no, let me in. ask you a technical question. It's yeah. completely off the mark. I mean, you know, I'm kind of older, different generations, and I've, I've finally adjusted to this keyboard stuff instead of a regular piano. <laughs> but then I see you with this little thing you've got there, and you're doing percussion and all sorts right. of sounds. Where's the big drum and all that? I jazz? have those. You know, uh, in this particular setup, this plays everything. It's a it's a Roland I hand gather, sonic. Yeah. So I have over yeah I have thousands of sounds in here, and then I have written program sounds. Uh -huh. So I have a, a, a drum grooves here that are written that I wrote, and then I can play on top of those any type of instrument uh, uh, percussion sound on top of those. You're hurting my head. That's enough. <laughs> and, and, and then and then I also have a regular acoustic kit drum kit uh -huh. that I bring to on tour, and then I'll have 
So I'll have this, and then I'll have the acoustic kit, and I'll play the acoustic kit, and then I'll jump on these and do some electronic stuff too. So it's, and it's really busy. Do it's, you sound it's, as good <laughs> with other groups as you do with Dave? No, of course not. Oh, please. <laughs> no, uh, Vinny, is, cut. <laughs> Vinny is playing with a, a marvelous band, uh, kind of a mini big band, if you will, uh, Penn and the Hornets, Larry Pindar. And uh, he's the uh, percussionist in that group. Uh, and I have to admit, I haven't actually heard them in person yet, but I know almost the whole band, and they're smoking, and that's the reason he's in that band. So, um, yeah, Vinny was just the, the perfect guy, and, I'm, and I, I can't appreciate him enough because he really, he stuck with me, you know, cool. and that's, that was uh, huge. So let's take a break now because knowing how you and I are, we'll be here for two hours still chatting, you know. That's right. Break, uh, Mr. Director, and we'll resume in a few minutes. And it's time to come back and entertain you some more with this wonderful, delicious entertainment. Please resume. Uh, let's, uh, before we get any farther in, I, the uh, theme of this particular show, I want to allude to that real briefly. Please do. Uh, you've been using that song for a long time. It's called Sunday Drive, and it's an original composition. I wrote it at least three weeks ago even though you've been using it for how many years? Many years. I mean, More years than we want to comp uh, And I get comp compliments from that. Wh where did that song come from? And yeah. I always send them back to you. I don't well, know if they call uh, you. That was on my second album. Uh, the album was called When Your Eyes Met Mine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the song is called Sunday Drive. And it was, uh, gee, it was written a long time ago. I think I wrote that before I even moved to Portland. <clears throat> so it's been around a long time, but it's, it's uh, I still love the tune. It's a great tune, and I'm proud that it's still uh, the theme for your show. Thank you. Thank you all this time. And I wish you had it handy here and let them hear one or two bars, but that's Well, it. we'll get to that. Thank you. Shall we do another tune for Please you? Please do. All right. Uh, you know, when I first moved to Portland, the traffic patterns on the freeways were rather predictable. Um, and over the course of time, we've gotten to the point where it seems like you can get caught in traffic at any time of the day or night. Yes. Uh, people are filled with rage, uh, sometimes me included, uh, because of some of the stuff that we see and, uh, and do. And so I wrote a tune uh, that, and, and my tunes are instrumental, I don't write words. The uh, the, the music speaks for itself, I hope. But this is a tune that I wrote for just those people on the road that are so PO'd that they can't take it anymore. And so this is called Rush Hour Fools. And we do uh, have our resident uh, fool uh, <laughs> that is the king of Rush Hour Fools. He's right there and he agreed to be with us today. And this song features, uh, we alluded to it earlier, but uh, my friend Floyd Cruz, mm -hmm. who uh, passed away uh, last March 17, St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the studio one day uh, recording a second album, which will come out. Uh, but we, uh, I had an idea for this tune, Rush Hour Fools, and, and I wanted something unique for it rather than just the music. So I had Floyd go in the studio booth and just say the three words, rush our fools. And then I uh, sampled those and put them through a bunch of different software and it kind of came out the way we've got it here. So mm -hmm. uh, my only regret is that Floyd never heard this, but I think he's listening right now. Good. Well, let's get going. Dude, here it goes. Rush our fools.
Rush hour fools. <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, you can take your fool mask off now <laughs> if you like. I mean, it's totally up to you. But, I don't uh, know how they do it. It's so hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it's hot. <laughs> and Floyd uh, Cruz, we mentioned him. He's also on another uh, uh, tune on the album, uh, which is uh, we uh, did two cover tunes on the album. Uh, one is uh, the one that Floyd's on is called Us and Them, which is an old Pink Floyd tune mm -hmm. from the album Dark Side of the Moon. And we have a what I think is a, a unique arrangement of that tune that that certainly uh, takes it from where it was and moves it to a different place. As to whether or not that's good or not, I suppose that's up to the listener. But <laughs> but we like it. Uh, the other cover tune is by John Coltrane, the uh, probably the greatest saxophone player to ever play sax, and uh, he wrote a, a wonderful jazz ballad back in the day called Naima, and we took that from a jazz ballad and made it into a swing funk tune. Swing kind funk. Kind of borrows from swing and funk. Uh, it's kind of a hard beat to describe, but you'll have to hear it. Uh, but we you gonna let me hear it? Huh? You gonna let me hear it? Well, not today, because there might be that pesky royalty issue. But um, uh -huh. okay. suffice it to say that, and then we got Renato Caranto to play this, the saxophone, and this is a, the Naima track <clears throat> began over 10 years ago uh, at my old recording studio in Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do the tune way back then, and I recorded Renato on the sax. Uh, and a gentleman named Graham Lear on the drums, who has played with Santana and Gino Vanelli and Cirque du Soleil, a bunch of people. And so that track survived all these years later, and then we put more stuff on it. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, that, that studio no longer exists because it burnt to the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that this the fact that the Coltrane tune lives at all is, is, is a way cool thing. And, and even though it really wasn't uh, a song that perhaps fit with other tunes on this album. I think we took it there with the arrangement. And personally, it was just a tune that I just, I had to get it out. <laughs> uh, it was just, it meant too much to me, uh, you know, for a bunch of reasons. Sure. So, uh, that's uh, the rest of the album, besides those two cover tunes, is original. And, uh, gee, on that last tune, I think there was uh, Rush Hour Fools, I should have mentioned uh, Skip. Von Kusky was on cello again, mm -hmm. and then on trumpet, uh, playing some wonderful uh, Maynard Ferguson kind of stuff way up there in the stratosphere. Uh, Joel Rydell played uh, trumpet and flugelhorn and muted trumpet on this album. So. Will that album be available for purchase? Well, we're working on that. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, we're kind of patiently waiting to see if some sort of uh, record contract or distribution deal might happen. Sure. But you know, we're not gonna wait forever. So at some point, if that doesn't happen, we'll put it out ourselves. Will you remind the viewers that your website is gonna be uh, on the screen uh, with your name and all that other stuff? So they Yeah, can if you'd you. like to email any of us, all and our YouTube. email addresses are there. Uh, my website for the recording studios up there, Bassett Audio Design. Yes. Uh, which stands for B-A-D, Bad Recordings. Bad. So sorry. <laughs> I'll bet you are. <laughs> Kick me out of here right now. Because I'm bad. Uh, anyway, uh, shall I do my solo thing now and see what kind of damage I can do here? Please. Okay. Uh, I got an iPad, uh, and I'd resisted getting one for a long time, but I finally got one here a while back, and... Uh, didn't really know what I was doing with it, had no clue as to whether or not it was going to be something I could really use or not. Uh, but I was in the, uh, <clears throat> the phone store there getting, I was actually updating her phone, and uh, it was taking a while, and so I spent some time over at the iPads, and you know, next thing I know, the salesman put one in my hands and I was walking out the door. Uh, but it's come to be a very cool piece. Uh, Started with just a couple of apps, and now I think I'm up to 35. And uh, what I'm going to use today is a app called Launchpad, uh, which I got for free. Uh, so we're going to use that. Uh, we're going to use uh, the iPhone, which is back here. 
And so we'll be playing, uh, loops will be coming out of the iPad, be occasionally playing a synthesizer sound on the uh, iPhone with this keyboard. And this keyboard here plays some sounds over here on a Yamaha synthesizer rack. So all that being said, uh, let's see if I can figure out something to do here. Uh, the interesting thing about these things that I do here with the loops and whatnot is that all I really know is what's coming my way is that I have given myself the key of the chords, which in this case is C minor. So that's really all I know. So let's. Uh, and that's enough. And, and for my purposes, that's probably enough. What's way more dangerous than I should know. But we're here's a little thing. Let's have a groove time, huh? Yeah. 
I'm gonna call Homeland Security. Somebody <laughs> gotta come get you. <laughs> that was delightful. Uh, thanks to Stevie Wonder on that one. I kind of was uh, quoting a bit of the, the track there that he did, Superstition. We got about 15 minutes or so left. What can you Shall do with Shall I do that? another one? Sure. Or we could do another one? I don't know. We hadn't planned another one, so let me uh, just look at this a second and uh, See if I have another one. I'm sure I do, but let's, uh, uh, what should I, I do? I like the funk on that last one. You like that one? <laughs> well, let's choose a, uh, all of these loops have, have names for their categories, and so this one is called Jazzy Live House. Uh-huh. And I buy these uh, little groups of loops. There's 48 that come in a set and one yellow square for each loop, but the loop packages cost two bucks a piece. So the app is free, and then the sound packages that I'm using are two bucks each. Oh, that's pretty reasonable. So it couldn't be, I mean, for, oh. for a working musician, those are good prices. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> so, but that's, but that's uh, kind of, uh, you know, the basis of, what, of what's happening here a lot. Well, again, this app is called Launchpad, and the other thing that uh, I've got here is an app by uh, the keyboard company Korg, and it's uh, called the Korg Gadget. Mm -hmm. So we're using those. So again, let's see what we got here, shall we?
<laughs> Beautiful. Oh, man, you've topped yourself again. You know, we haven't discussed politics at all today, and that's been quite refreshing. Yes. So I'm not going to pursue that at all. <laughs> and that's a, my daughter's thanking me for that. So what do you want to say to the viewers? Let's finish with your voice. Gee, uh, it's really a group thing. It's not about me. It's about all three of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, we've created something that's, that's fun for us and creative. And we hope that others will find that same joy that we have found in making it and performing it. So uh, it's up to the universe now. Yes, let's go on living and loving. Thank you. And yes. good night. <laughs>